Our next guest is writer and broadcaster Esther Kraku. Esther, welcome back. Look, there was some pretty extensive early reporting about what Prince Harry referred to as a near-catastrophic car chase through the streets of New York. However, as the week progressed, accounts from various others have cast maybe a little bit of doubt on the initial claims from the Sussexes. Can you fill us in on what information's come to light and how the story's evolved over the week? Well, th this press release that was re um, that was released by the Sussexes just shows kind of how the, their use of language hasn't matured enough to really understand kind of the repercussions of what could happen. So a near-catastrophic car chase, most people were thinking of, you know, Princess Diana and the horrible uh, car accident that she was involved in in Paris, which was literally a catastrophic car chase um, involving uh, loads of paparazzi. Um, when when this press release was 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 put forth, Many people were questioning how you could possibly have a car chase in Manhattan, um, given the fact that it's a very densely populated, heavily regulated city like London. I mean, I remember making the point that you couldn't actually have a car chase in somewhere like, like London because you would end up in Kent. Um, it's, it's literally impossible. There are so many cameras and, and speed controls. Um, so it was mainly the language that they used that, that caused confusion. And also the, the mayor of New York, Eric Adams, came out and said, you know, they are reviewing the footage of, of the, the Sussex's car. Uh, during that night, but he really doubts that it could have been a, a car chase just because of the logistics of that and, and how impossible it seems. Um, so it's mainly a language issue, but also it's a, a huge failure in security. Um, there are many security professionals that have come out saying, you know, they don't understand why the Sussexes security detail didn't actually include how to get them to the event and get them out of the event back home safely. Um, one of the, their security uh, personnel said that they moved the couple into a, a taxi in a bid to try and avoid the paparazzi, but obviously they didn't cover up Megan's bright gold dress, so she stood out like a sore thumb anyway. Um, but then there were questions being raised about why you would want to get this couple into an unsecure vehicle, like a taxi, to try and avoid the paparazzi, when really they should have accounted for the fact that there would be major paparazzi uh, at this event and find a way to get them to uh, their destination safely. So these are the, the conflicting reports that have come from, from uh, the couple's press release. And it's very confusing because, you know, the, the, they, they implied that the relentless pursuit of the paparazzi could have endangered many people. But again, all the footage and all the evidence that's coming out is, has said that there would be no injuries. No one was, was even remotely injured. Um, they, they claimed that there were two NYPDs, um, PD officers that were almost injured. Again, we've not heard any kind of uh, corroborating reports from, from the NYPD themselves. Uh, so it's just, it's, it's a very... Uh, uh, confusing story, uh, should I say. And it just goes to show that the, the, the Sussexes really didn't put in a lot of thought into just basically the security detail with regards to this event, but also why they chose to, the, to move to the US in particular, which has the loosest paparazzi laws in the world, to, to pursue their own privacy. It doesn't even make sense. Um, it would make sense to move somewhere like France that has really high, um, you know, really stringent paparazzi laws. But if they're going to move to somewhere like the US and then complain about paparazzi, it doesn't really make sense because they knew that they, the, the paparazzi laws are very loose over there. Well, that is really quite right. And look, by all means, if something happens, whether it's the Sussexes or anyone else, you're, you know, give an account. But, you know, make sure you're given an, an accurate account. But do you think that any of that potential embellishment or perhaps, you know, a little bit of carelessness around the words used, do you think that that then gets used to reinforce people's views about Meghan and Harry? I think so, indirectly. And I don't think that was what the couple set out to do. Again, I, I, like I said, I don't think their, their press team really understand the nuance of language. And um, this is why being in the royal family was effectively a blessing in disguise, because the royal family are media trained. I, you know, I don't think you could find a more media savvy institution in the world. Um, and, you know, people's immediate reaction were... Obviously, thankfully, no one was hurt. This is still a couple with young children. Uh, we don't want anyone to be hurt, neither the couple or anyone involved, including the drivers or the pedestrians, all of that. But it's, it, it just goes to show that accuracy and, you know, really branding is extremely important, especially to a couple like the Sussexes that have really lost a lot of credibility uh, since, um, well, since their shenanigans after leaving the royal family. Um, and it's really quite unfortunate because I, I, I do think that they were shaken. I do think that they weren't expecting this. But again, it's a massive failure in security above everything else because really they pay, I'm, I'm pretty sure they pay 
a lot of money to their security team to protect them, to keep them safe. Of course, they're public figures, they're, they're persons of interest. And I just don't understand how they could have been in a situation where they were attending an event and they didn't, they didn't have the ability to get to and from the event safely. Apparently, they, they decided to go and stay at a, friend, uh, a friend's house um, instead of going to this, the hotel that they had booked because they didn't want the paparazzi to know where they were staying. It's all just very confused. And, and I, I really don't understand why their security team didn't factor this in more.